Hello boys and girls. We could water paint today with a watercolor set, a brush, a container of water, something to draw with, maybe a black crayon, some paper towel, and of course, a little creativity. Hello boys and girls. Today we are going to make a small painting. If you don't have paint supplies, don't worry. You can do it in drawing format or use any materials you have. If you still have your watercolor set, you can take that out. You're going to want water, paper towel. This is my daughter's set. This is a set I've been using all year. It's pretty rough and it's almost completely out. You're going to want a pencil, an eraser, if you have it. A sharpie or a marker if you have one, or a crayon, something to kind of oof, add your drawing. We're going to be creating a three-dimensional ball jar, like a little jar with some flowers for celebrating the spring and summer coming soon. So boys and girls, to make a jar or a vase, you're going to want to draw a sort of a circular shape, but it's flatter and it's called an ellipse, it looks like an oval. It doesn't have to be perfect, okay? So maybe in the center here, I'm just gonna go round, round, round and try to make an oval, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect, you can erase it, you can erase parts of it, but I'm just going to make this oval. First step. Now on a jar, you're gonna have a little bit of a ridge, so I drew two two straight lines down. This is not going to be perfect. It's really hard to get things perfectly. So do you see this ellipse? It's a circle from the side. You drop down a little bit and you can copy that line and then that's the top of the jar. And these little jars have little bumps on them, those little ridges. And then we can add that with marker or whatever materials we have. Now a jar would come straight down. So I'm just gonna draw a straight line down. It's gonna come straight down. And the bottom of the jar is gonna copy this shape. This is in three dimension. You're gonna have that soft curve over, just like this soft curve over. And I'm just going back and forth, trying to get my line set. Doesn't have to be perfect. You can erase, you draw softly, and we're gonna have wildflowers in here, or leaves even. Now that's way too big for this jar, but that's okay. I just want to get the shape of the bottom of the ledge. I'm going to be erasing part of it. And my jar will probably come out a little bit and then go straight down. So you want to just sort of copy the straight line down. I'm doing really soft, sketchy lines because I really don't know how I'm going to draw that edge. Artists generally just draw soft, sketchy lines and then decide which line they like the best, what they think looks the best. And I'm kind of happy with following this line down, 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 and kind of curving up. Erase, start over when you're not happy. This is a little bit too boxy. I just want to curve it more. There we go. Granted, this is not a straight line, so I'm going to fix that. And you just try your best. See, mine's all crooked. Here we go. Now, in a glass jar, if you're drawing a glass jar, maybe you're just drawing a vase and not a glass jar, you might see the other side at the bottom. And you're going to see a line down, if you have water in it, curving over and showing the top of the water. You boys and girls belong with the wildflowers, so let's add some wildflowers. Real simple lines. Now I'm going to go back into this with a Sharpie. But right now I'm just going to add some flowers going up, 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 
maybe a simple little line over to create a couple leaves. And I don't want to add the top of the flower. I want to add the top a little bit up. And I'm going to do a sideways view. So there's the top of like a daisy, and then it has these little petals that come down. You can curve them. I don't want them too sharp. And here's some daisies. You can also draw two lines to make your stem, but today I'm just drawing a kind of a simple sketch. Not completely happy with this, but I can fix it later. And maybe I'll have right here another stem coming out or down. And I'm just going to draw some squiggly lines. And that's going to be um, a carnation, which has tons of little petals. But I'm not going to add them all because I want to add them with paint. Oh, I got paint on my paper. And Right here, I think I'm just going to curve out and add like a little fern with tiny little leaves. And then, of course, they're never perfect. They're kind of crooked and some are bent. And maybe I'll have another different type of flower from here going up. And I think I'm going to add one with a center and petals that shoot out. I'm going to erase this line. We don't have to draw many. And then we will, if you have a Sharpie or some kind of marker, you can sketch and trace over your lines. Otherwise, you can just leave a pencil line. Or if you have maybe even a nice crayon, you can trace over. I'm not convinced by this flower, but that's okay. And maybe a couple leaves on this. I want to make another carnation up here. And then I think I'm finished with these flowers. Simple, simple, simple. I'm going to fill in the rest of the flower with paint. Here are my wildflowers. And you can even maybe draw a line for where the tabletop is. You can add something to the tabletop. Maybe a little leaf that fell. You decide. I'm sure you'll come up with something interesting. And boys and girls, now I'm going to outline it and then I'm going to add paint. And I'm not going to add every little line. It's just kind of a suggestion, a soft line suggestion. And here we go. I wish I had a skinnier black marker, but I don't. So we're just dealing with what we've got. And I'm going to outline and then I'm going to add paint. And I've added my carnations, and I think I'm going to add some of the water in my jar here, very lightly, barely anything. 
Maybe I'll make my tabletop kind of bluish, which is kind of nice. Kind of painterly, like I'm not going to fill it all in. I'm just going to kind of softly go back and forth. Maybe a little bit of a different blue here. Just to give you the feeling of the tabletop. And keep washing my brush. And forth. I know. Add some greens. If you don't have green, just use something else. Add a little green here to my leaf. That's the worst green. There's like nothing in it. There's like no color. Oh, there's a little bit. There we go. Very little. I want to add some leaves inside the jar too. There we go. If you have a kind of a complicated set of watercolors, there's usually more than one green, which is fun to play with. Different colors of the same tone. Or different tones of the same color, I should say. There's the green stems. Adding a little more color, and maybe now my flowers. I kind of like that the watercolor is like leaving the lines a little bit, so it's not perfect. They stuck inside there. This looks like a black eyed Susan. All right, boys and girls, you can paint the background if you like. Maybe I'll add a little color up here. Oh, those leaves. All right, boys and girls, enjoy yourselves. Can't wait to see your work. And you've got this three-dimensional looking jar, a few plants, some nice little leaves. I think I'm gonna work on the background here. I'm sad that I got a little bit of blue on here, but that's okay. And now the background, I'm just gonna kind of softly add some green. Go around. I'm just kind of doing it very suggestively, like just not barely touching. Adding a little color. I'm not happy with that. Let's see how this one looks. Sometimes sets don't release much color. There's not much green in there. Can't even see it. Here we go. I'm going to go back to this one. Thank you, boys and girls. There we go. Spring flowers. Little soft lines. And a nice composition. Thank you. Thank you, boys and girls. I'm really looking forward to seeing your work.